All right, good afternoon to you. I'm Fox 26 meteorologist Ramisha Shea. Time to track the tropics, see what is going on out there, and if we have anything to worry about here in Houston and the rest of Southeast Texas. Of course, back on July 8th, we were hit by ferocious hurricane barrel. Since then, we haven't had a whole lot to worry about, but of course, the big story over the last week has been the destruction, the catastrophic devastation caused by Hurricane Helene. Now, fortunately, we had a cold front to push through our area and that kind of pushed Helene off to the east of the Houston area, so we didn't have to deal with it. However, several states were impacted. We're talking about at this point, more than 160 people that were killed across Florida, Georgia, Virginia, the Carolinas, and into Tennessee, especially eastern parts of Tennessee. Also, that catastrophic flooding caused some towns in western North Carolina to be completely wiped away. We're talking about everything gone. It's really unrecognizable to the folks that have lived there for so many years. Now, this at going to be at this point the third deadliest mainland U.S. hurricane since 1969. And of course, there are still hundreds of people that are unaccounted for, most likely because those floodwaters likely washed some of those homes away and they are still doing search and rescue and that will likely continue for many days to come. Here's a look at some of that rainfall. Rainfall, in fact, over the last seven days, showing tremendous amounts of rain that fell from the Florida Panhandle all the way through much of Georgia into North Carolina, South Carolina, and over into Tennessee and up into Virginia. Of course, the hardest hit area, western portions of North Carolina and western northwestern portions of South Carolina. Look at this. Over the last seven days, our Fox Red Radar estimating near Hendersonville, North Carolina, over 40 inches of rain. And most of that rain fell within a one to two day time frame. So that is why we are dealing with such catastrophic flooding. You can see over towards Asheville, close to 15 inches of rain there. East of Asheville, over 20 inches of rain. So that's why we are still going to be dealing with a lot of rescue and recovery for quite some time. A little bit farther to the south, you could see that we had anywhere from 10 to 16 inches of rain falling across parts of the Carolinas and down to Augusta, Georgia, close to a foot of rain for parts of Atlanta, Georgia. So that caused a lot of higher water rescues and several people were caught in those flood waters. So that was a devastating situation there. Of course, Beryl or Helene rather made landfall right around the Big Bend of Florida late on Thursday night. And even around the Big Bend of Florida, there were several inches of rain that were reported around 10 inches for Quincy, Florida, just northwest of Tallahassee and close to a foot down around Apalachicola, Florida, that's off to the south and east of Pensacola. So we are still going to be dealing with the cleanup and the aftermath of Hurricane Helene for quite some time, but that's not the only system that we've had to deal with so far for this hurricane season. In fact, we're now up to 11 named storms that we've had, starting off with Alberto early on in the season, of course, we were hit by barrel here in Houston back on July 8th. Most recently, we had Hurricane Helene roll across Florida, the Carolinas, Georgia, Virginia, Tennessee. And of course, we had Isaac and Joyce. Both of those systems are gone, but we still have Kirk, which is a category one hurricane out there in the central Atlantic. I also think we're pretty close to having Leslie and potentially even Milton over the next week. So we'll have to monitor these systems closely. First, let's check out what's happening in the Gulf of Mexico and the Caribbean. And you'll notice kind of a lot of chaos out there. There's a lot of convection or showers and storms bubbling up in the northwestern portion of the Caribbean and also in the southern portions of the Gulf of Mexico. We have quite a few showers and storms. Now these bursts of that showers and storms or thunderstorm action are associated with what we call the Central American Gyre. So that's basically a broad, fairly weak area of low pressure that kind of spins over Central America. So occasionally, 
some burst of showers and storms or a little area of low pressure can spin up and break apart from that Central American gyre. And that is when we can get a tropical system going. So we are monitoring for the threat of that happening. Right now we've got multiple areas that we're watching, particularly in the southern Gulf of Mexico and into the western Caribbean Sea. So at this point, the chance of one of these areas bubbling up and becoming our next tropical system up to about a 40% chance. So the area to watch would be the area highlighted in this orange. That's going to be central southern portions of the Gulf and north and western portions of the Caribbean. So the chance for tropical formation over the next two days near 0%, but over the next week, there's still a medium decent 40% chance that we could have a tropical system developing in maybe the Western Caribbean or the Gulf of Mexico. What does our exclusive Fox model future cast show? Well, let me take you through it hour by hour, just showing a lot of showers and storms bubbling up across the Western Caribbean, the Gulf of Mexico, nothing really getting too organized as we go through this evening and through Thursday. However, by this weekend, you will notice some of that tropical moisture starting to stream a little closer to the Houston area and rolling into parts of Houston. So this is 4 p.m. Saturday. I'll stop the clock here. You'll notice some of that tropical moisture starting to push over parts of the Gulf Coast, stretching from New Orleans back to Houston, down to Corpus Christi. So that means even if we don't get a tropical depression or tropical storm to form, we've still got that risk for that tropical moisture increasing those rain chances. And unfortunately, it's going to be on the weekend. So that may impact some of your weekend outdoor plans. Heading into Sunday, we are going to have the chance for more of this tropical moisture impacting parts of the Gulf Coast. I think for Sunday, best chance will be east of Houston, New Orleans, over into the Florida Panhandle and getting into parts of the Florida Peninsula. Of course, areas that don't need additional rain. Of course, I just showed you that map where parts of the Big Bend of Florida over the last week picked up almost a foot of rain. And now we've got the potential for more. So our forecast rain between today and early next week on Tuesday showing likely around an inch or less for Houston and Galveston. But look at this, the purples, the lilac lavender colors are starting to get very close to Tampa and Sarasota and Florida. And you see those yellows, oranges and reds getting close to New Orleans, Mobile and even close to Tallahassee. That means anywhere from three to almost 10 inches of rain could fall over the next week for some of these spots. So that means even without a tropical system officially forming, we could have more flooding issues in some of the same areas that have experienced flooding issues over the last week. So something to watch. But at this point, just a 40% chance that we would get a tropical storm or a hurricane developing in the Gulf. Now let's head out into the Atlantic where we do have development. We've got Kirk, which is a pretty healthy hurricane in the central Atlantic. There's Kirk there, and we also have newly formed Tropical Depression 13 to the east southeast of Hurricane Kirk. That's still in the far east Atlantic, but it is very close to becoming a tropical storm. The next name on the list would be Leslie, so we'll likely have Tropical Storm Leslie pretty soon. As far as Kirk is concerned, it is a hurricane, still a category one, but it's getting stronger up to 90 mile per hour winds, and it is moving northwest around 12 miles per hour. So it is likely going to bubble up to a major category three hurricane by Thursday. So that would be tomorrow. And even the models have it going to an even stronger category four hurricane as we go into the weekend. So this is a very powerful, potentially dangerous catastrophic hurricane. But here's the good news. It makes a turn to the north and then the northeast as we go through next week, and it likely will be a fish storm. It's not expected to impact land. So even though it's going to be a super powerful hurricane, I don't think we'll have to worry about it bringing some significant impacts to the U.S. or any other land areas for that matter. All right, Tropical Depression 13 is expected to get stronger as well, likely Tropical Storm Leslie by later today, and maybe Hurricane Leslie by Saturday and Sunday. Right now, 35 mile per hour winds, maximum wind gusts at 45 miles per hour and moving to the west at seven miles per hour. So once again, Tropical Depression 13 likely to become Tropical Storm Leslie. However, it's likely gonna stay out over the open water as well. So we are into the month of October and these are some of the areas that we monitor for possible tropical development. And right now the Western Atlantic, the Caribbean, 
the Western Caribbean, particularly, and the Southern Gulf of Mexico will be the areas with the highest risk for development. So we're keeping a really close eye on those spots. We've still got very warm ocean temps out there in the Atlantic, the Western Atlantic and the Caribbean Sea and the Gulf of Mexico water temps still bubbling up into the 80s. So certainly something that we're keeping a very close eye on because that warm water acts as fuel for these tropical systems. All right, it's been a busy season. It's already been a long season. We've still got all of October and all of November to get through. But notice after the second week of October or so, the chance for tropical cyclone activity really starting to go down. So that is certainly some good news. So we are going to be monitoring very closely for the potential for additional tropical development. But at this point, it looks like nothing heading towards the Houston area, at least over the next day or two. But of course, we will continue to monitor any of those disturbances in the Gulf to see if one of those could develop and head our way. Well, that would do it for your tropical update for today. I'm Fox 26 meteorologist Ramesha Shade. Enjoy the rest of your day.